hi friends, you've got the fabric, you've got the pattern, you've done the mock-up, you're 99.9% .9 sure that you're ready to cut your fabric. There's a few things you need to know and do before you cut that fabric. Enough talking already. Let's hurry up and get busy so we can cut this fabric. To catch you up to speed on this process, in the last video, as I was reading some of your comments, some of them made so much sense to me that I changed things up a bit. One of the suggestions said, keep it up on your design board for a couple days and just come in and out and take a look at it and see if it's still something that you'd wanna make. When I did that, I noticed that it was looking too much like an Irish chain quilt. And I like that pattern all right, but it wasn't what I wanted for this quilt. So I took out those white blocks with a suggestion from someone else in the comments that said, instead of the white, use some of the lighter patterns in the fabric line that I chose. Now I was on the path to 100%. And of course, you know, I made a mock-up. So I did two darks and two lights. I like it so much better. Now that I know that I'm going to use a light and dark type pattern sequence within my four patch checkerboard quilt, I need to figure out what the light and dark fabrics are within my pretty fabric. Grab that cell phone that you have and take a picture of all of your fabrics together. Once you take that picture, you're gonna go to edit it and there should be an option for black and white. Once you capture that black and white photo, I then put a color photo right alongside that black and white photo so I can tell what fabric's what because once it's black and white, you really can't tell what color's what. I want you to notice the difference in the light and the darks. That's how we are going to contrast these colors right here because remember, I want two different prints that are dark and two different prints that are light. I even go as far as to print this out and post it up on my design board as I'm working with the fabric. It's a lot easier than having to go back into your phone and check and see and open the app and, you know, do all that. If you have something right in front of you, you're more apt to look at it and you're more apt to be precise. The next step in this process is to starch all of this fabric. Why? When I decided on my four and a half inch four patch, I left no room for air. When you add starch or water to cotton fabric, it shrinks. In some cases, it can shrink over a quarter inch. That's a lot when it comes to quilting. I found this board right here at the dollar store and it was only a couple bucks. It's one of those tri-fold cardboard things, you know, whatever. You can use any cardboard that you have though. I don't lay my fabric on this printed side of the cardboard because I'm afraid that once my fabric's wet, it will soak up some of that ink, so we don't want that. So you want a side of cardboard that has no writing or color that can transfer to your fabric. I use this heavy starch from the Dollar General. I like the aerosol can. You use whatever you like. Get yourself one of these right here. It's a paint can trigger handle works perfect on this starch can. Lay one piece of fabric down first, shake. I start at one edge of the fabric and I drench it. And I just slowly go over, making sure that I catch every little bit. If your hand gets tired, switch arms. <laughs> I don't find it necessary to starch the back of this fabric. The front drenching it, that's enough for me. I don't know if you can tell how wet that is, but it's definitely wet. <laughs> it's not just damp, it's wet. Then what I would do is just take another fat quarter, sort of lay it on top or off to the side until I get this filled up with about five fat quarters or so. Some of this fabric right here will absorb some of the liquid from this fat quarter too underneath. So it is getting a little bit on the back. The next step for me would be to lay it out over a flat surface in a room where there's an overhead fan or a fan coming in from the side. I typically let mine air dry with the fans on approximately 25 minutes or a little bit more depending on if it's cold in the house or not. Trust me, starched fabric is so much easier to work with than non-starched fabric. 
Your fat quarters are all air dried. Now it's time to press them. I do use a dry iron sometimes and sometimes I do use steam. It just all depends. If you have heavy creases from the fat quarters being folded, you may need to use a little steam. It's hard to tell on camera. This is dry, but yet it still has a dampness to it. Now, when I put the dry iron to it, it should dry right up. We are just going to simply press it just like we would any other item. When ironing up all these fat quarters, it may be a good time for you just to throw on a podcast or something or throw on a few videos from the sewing channel and just binge watch. <laughs> this fabric that felt damp at first is now dry. Once that hot iron hits it, it dries right up. This fabric is nice and crispy. Perfect for cutting up some four patches. I am going to need 105 of these four and a half inch white or semi-white pieces of fabric. You can see here, this is part of the fabric line. It has a very light, light gray within it. I'm going to use that as a white in this case. I can get 16 four and a half inch squares out of one fat quarter. And if my calculations are correct, which, um, you know, I'm going to need a roundish 105, which means I'm going to need about seven fat quarters. Fat quarters always come a bit wonky. So I try to get as even as I can if there is a print within the fabric. These have little X's on them, so I'm lining up all the little X's on the fold there. I'm going to put it on a line on my mat. I'm gonna face the fold toward me because I need to even up the edge so I can start my cuts. I'm going to find the line on my mat because I've lined it up down here on the fold. At this point, you don't need to line this fold up now because you know that that is a straight edge right there. And I need four and a half inches. I'm going to use the two ruler method where I line up along the edge here exactly what I need, which is four and a half inches. Fold that, butt this ruler up against there. Make sure the line on this ruler is straight as well. So it's lined up, the line on my mat, and we're just going to layer them making sure that our salvages are right on top of one another. Now cut off those salvages. Line up four and a half inches. So I'm going to continue to cut those. The next step was to get out all that pretty fabric and cut five inch strips. I had one hiccup as I was doing this that I noticed. Not sure if you can see real good from the camera angle, but whenever you have like a gingham check like this, sometimes when they manufacture it, it comes off the bolt skewed. I don't know. This happens a lot, even with designer fabric. I don't want a crooked gingham in my block. So this is how I combat this. Let me show you. No matter what I did to this fabric, it just wouldn't go straight. I mean, we want a perfect little block. I would have to cut the blocks all like that. My fix for this, instead of seeing the imperfection within this fabric, we are going to embrace that imperfection. We are going to set it on point. With this technique, you may get a bit of waste, but to me it's worth it because I don't want a crooked gingham in my quilt unless I meant for it to happen. <laughs> I turn it like this so that the lines are coming up to a point as I'm looking at it. For this block, since I'm pairing it with another block, I need these blocks to be five inch. Our white blocks were four and a half inches because they're going to be set themselves within the quilt. These ones need to be five inches because we are going to be pairing them with another fabric and taking them down to four and a half inches. Let's find out where your five inch block ends. So if you count up here all the way to five, where that fabric ends. With this 45 degree angle on your ruler, you can sort of see how it connects up with that gingham nicely and get that as straight as you can, being sure that you have cleared that right there at the five inch mark. These ones I have to cut out separately every time just to make sure that they're right. A little bit of a pain, but it works for me. 
I'll then turn it around so that it's facing me this way. I don't want to cut into the rest of this yet because I'm really not sure how many I can get out of that since I'm cutting it all weird. So we'll see. And since I used starch on all of this fabric, we know that nothing is going to shift or skew any more than it already is. Line up your five inch perfect square. And there you have a perfectly set on point gingham block. Now it's time to cut these five inch strips into five inch squares and then put them into piles of lights and darks. I've cut out a couple of the darks in the gingham and then a couple of the lights in the gingham and then here's our big large pile of four and a half inch filler blocks. I'm going to keep this handy right here next to me so I know which light is which and which dark is which. As a side note, I did not cut all the strips up yet because I'm still not sure how many of these I'm going to need. So hopefully I'll have that number for you by the end of today's video. The ones with the bigger floral print were the ones where I was going to have the block separate all by itself, like four and a half inch squares right here. So I'm just waiting to see how many of these I actually will need before I do a lot of cutting of the floral ones. So that's why I'm setting those aside. So you have your pile of darks and your pile of lights and then you're simply just going to match them up the way that you think it looks nice. You remember in the last video that we did for this quilt, we put a pin in the top right, leaving enough space for the presser foot to go through. And then I'm going to turn it this way and put a pin in the top right on this side, enough space for the presser foot to go through. In that last video though, I did put four pins and if you feel more confident in doing that, go right ahead. I felt like two was all I needed. Now it's time to take these over to the sewing machine. We have our five inch squares all paired up and we're just going to do a quarter inch down both sides. Turn on your machine mill first. That would help. I do backstitch on everything. I don't care if it's clothing or garments or projects. I don't like my stuff to come undone. I am going to chain stitch these. I don't know where that little flower thing is that I got for Christmas, otherwise I'd be using that. But for now, we'll just snip with scissors. Since I rearranged my sewing room, I can't find a lot of my things. <laughs> Go figure. You're gonna take those five inch squares. These are the two sides that we sewed together, just straight down both sides. There's a tube type situation happening there. You're going to measure over two and a half inches and make a cut. Set the seam in a few of them. You can pile them up and we are going to open the seams. You end up with two identical piles once we've sewn those five inches together, the light and the dark. So let's just set this one aside for a second and let's pull out a light and a dark and another light and a dark. When you put these two together, you need to make sure that dark is touching light and light is touching dark. And you can always refer back to that picture again. We are going to line up seam to seam right on top of one another. You're gonna get out your glue stick. You're going to line up these seams perfectly. Lift up, make sure that it's perfect. Go ahead and mark with your glue. This glue spot right here, what we're gluing, it is going to be the center of our four patch. That glue is going to help us have perfect middle points. So you'll line that up. Lift up a little bit, make sure you're spot on. So a quarter inch down both sides. No need to pin on this because the glue is going to hold that. Just like before, you have that open tube. And just like before, we're going to measure over two and a half inches. Go ahead and set your seam. 
We're going to open these seams. You can press open or to the side, whatever you feel comfortable doing. You end up with these two darling four patches, darks and lights. I love this quilt already. I love the different whites. This one is a little bit more white on white. This is one that I added in, tone on tone white. And this one has the gray in it and this has the gray gingham. This has the light, very light gray X in it. And then that grayish pattern, I love that. I do have some of the large print florals that I just threw in there just to see how it was gonna look. I, I'm gonna absolutely love it. The way that I did these four patches, I'm not gonna have to really worry about which orientation they are within the quilt. At least I don't think so. I just scattered them up there. I still haven't figured out <laughs> how many four patches I need yet, but I'll know by the next video, I'm sure. We're going to need to name this quilt for the next video. Leave me down in the comments what you think my quilt should be called. Until next time on the Sewing Channel, take care.